The girl went to the boxing gym. As soon as she struck a pose, she got kicked away. The guy behind her took the opportunity to produce milk. Though she is pretty and adorable, she refuses to be outdone. So, she counterattacked. Surprisingly, this wasn't just any boxing gym. It specialized in training assassins. Since she is the only girl there, the men force her to do all the dirty work. However, she refused to back down. Her decision to be in a boxing gym wasn't only driven by a desire. Instead, she is leaving here because she wants to become strong to avenge her father. Her name is Yoon Jaiwoo. Just a month ago, Jaiwoo was a 10th grade student. Her life was constantly under the watchful eye of the police, due to her father being a wanted fugitive. She's always under surveillance. Not only do her classmates avoid her, but even her teacher suggests she should quit school. Such a life forced her to the end. Frustrated, she returned to the classroom. A bully mocks her as a gangster's daughter and puts a bag of flour on her desk, mentioning her father's involvement in drugs. Faced with the ridicule of your classmates, this time she didn't want to hold back anymore, so she grabs the flour and hurls it at the girl. A fight ensues, pitting Jaiwoo against four classmates. Despite being shoved against a wall, she fights back. Alone, she takes down three of them. When a classmate pulls a pencil as a threat, Jaiwoo swiftly deals with her. She makes it clear that she won't be bullied. The classroom falls silent as the once arrogant girls tremble in fear. Who thought even criminal's daughters would know how to fight like that? Proving she can handle herself, Jaiwoo grabs her bag and leaves. The teacher rushes in, but Jaiwoo hands over her name tag and drops out, before the school can kick her out. On her way back home, she got frustrated by the chasing police officer, so she smashes the cop car's side mirror as he watches her. The police give chase, but she outmaneuvers them and makes it back home. There's a cake and flowers from her father, Mr. Dong Hun, but she kicks them aside. She has been living alone for a while, but her father never talked to her and even stopped responding to her calls. It was because he was trying to stay out of the radar as much as possible. Frustrated by the negativity surrounding her, she vents her anger on him. She holds him responsible for all the hardships in her life. In a fit of emotion, she declares him dead to her. Feeling guilty, Mr. Dong Hun visits her at night. But outside her apartment, an unknown person approaches him. Hearing noises, Jai Wu tries to open the door. But Mr. Dong Hun tightly grips the handle to shield her from the stranger. The assailant shoots him, and Jai Wu witnesses her father's death. After the assailant leaves, Jai Wu opens the door, only to discover her father lifeless on her doorstep. She tries to wake him up, but he's already gone. At Mr. Dong Hun's funeral, his friend and boss, Mr. Choi Mu Jin, pays his respects to the departed. He is the biggest gangster in the city. Seeking justice for her father, Jai Wu goes to the police station. Sadly, they lack evidence and can't proceed with the investigation. Left with no choice, Jai Wu turns to Mr. Mu Jin for help. When she shares her plan for revenge, Mu Jin gives her a knife and demands she kill him. Frightened, Jai Wu hesitates. So Mu Jin slaps her making her understand that she can't avenge her father without knowing how to take a life. Though he refuses further assistance, Jaiwa remains determined to seek revenge. At night, a knock echoes at her door. Fearful, she stays silent, prompting the man to depart. After he leaves, Jaiwa follows him, but he speeds away in his car. Determined for revenge, Jaiwa uses a blurry CCTV photo to identify the murderer. A mysterious caller claims knowledge of the man. However, upon confrontation, they reveal themselves as mere troublemakers. They rob her and start tormenting her. As she passes out, they kidnap her. Before things escalate, Mu Jin intervenes and saves her. Witnessing Jai Wu's resolve, he decides to assist her. He takes her to a boxing gym where future assassins are trained. Instead of teaching her, the boys treat her as a maid. Some even attempt to take advantage but Jaiwu stands strong and refuses to back down. Jaiwu persists in her training, becoming Mujin's student. He instructs her on striking an opponent's vital points for victory. Practicing together, Jaiwu inadvertently leaves an impression on Mujin by hitting him in the chest during a sudden attack. In a high-stakes boxing competition involving 20 fighters, Jaiwu uses Mujin's tactics. She targets vital areas like lips, eyes, and genitals to defeat each opponent. Advancing through the rounds, she faces the final opponent, Gang Jae. The confrontation turns brutal, with Gang Jae initially dominating. He chokes her with a chain and hurls her against the fence. The tide shifts several times until Jaiwa stages a comeback using her combat skills. 
In a pivotal moment, she delivers a decisive elbow strike to Genji's face. It makes him unconscious. Mr. Mujin declares Jaiwa the victorious winner of the intense match. When Genji wakes up, he decides to take revenge on Jaiwu for his humiliation. While she is bathing, he drugs her water. When she is under the drug's influence, she enters her room with his friend to sexually assault her. At first, Jaiwu is unable to defend herself. However, when her father's ash pot falls and breaks, she picks up the glass piece and stabs the friend. She then escapes the room, with Gangje following her with a hammer. He breaks her arm, but before he can do anything further, men gather around him. For attacking Jaiwu, Mu Jin decides to cut one of his limbs. In the end, he slashes his face as a punishment. Mr. Mu Jin then has a meeting with Jaiwu and tells her that she is now considered dead in the eyes of the world. From now on, she will be going by the name Oh Hyogen. Mu Jin passes her the gun left by the murderer at the scene, which they manage to recover. He discloses that a police officer is Mr. Don Hun's killer, but beyond that, there's no further information. Taking this to heart, Jaiwu diligently improves her combat abilities. She not only joins Mujin's group but also secures a spot in the police department. He promises unwavering loyalty to the organization. It is decided that if she ever betrays them, they can eliminate her without hesitation. Years roll by, and Jaiwu stays committed to her job as a cop. One day, she embarks on a mission to arrest a drug dealer named Park Changu in the act. Inside a building, she spots him conducting a deal. Meanwhile, her lookout associate tells her that her mission coincides with a narcotics department sting operation involving another undercover cop. Despite knowing the complexity of the situation, Jaiwu doesn't back down. She smashes through the room's glass window. She is ready to apprehend Changu. Chaos erupts as a fight ensues between Jaiwu and the gangsters. Thanks to her combat skills, Jaiwu successfully arrests the drug dealer. However, her interruption frustrates Sergeant John Peldo. He steps in and demands Jaiwu to let him arrest Park Chang-gu. Jaiwu refuses initially. However, when she receives confirmation about Peldo's mission, she reluctantly lets the drug dealer go with him. As she prepares to leave, Peldo expresses a wish to never cross paths with her again. He is clearly annoyed by the interference. Jaiwu faces the consequences of her mission interruption when Cha Jiho, the head of the Narcotics Bureau, calls her into the office. Interestingly, Jiho is the same hooded man who had visited Jaiwu after her father's death. As he reads through Jaiwu's file, he discovers that she had applied to the Narcotics Bureau twice before, but her applications were rejected. However, seeing her determination and realizing she's on a personal quest, he recognizes her potential and approves her application. This decision doesn't sit well with Sergeant Peldo, who's visibly displeased to see her. Jiho goes on to inform Pildo that not only will Jaiwu be joining the department, but she will also be his new partner. Later, Pildo digs into Shangu's case and stumbles upon a lead regarding another dealer named Mango. They head to Mango's building with orders for Jaiwu to make the arrest. When stopped by a security guard, Jaiwu swiftly uses her combat skills to take him down. Amid Jaiwu's confrontation with the goons, Pildo starts getting concerned about her delay. He decides to enter the building and is astonished to find that Jaiwu has single-handedly subdued several men. Mango gets caught, but he remains tight-lipped about the new drugs and his supplier. While Pildo searches for the drugs, Jaiwu scours the bar. She discovers a bottle containing the new substance. Mango was brought in for interrogation, but he adamantly refuses to tell the supplier's name. According to him, the person who supplies him with drugs is scary. He is the guy who you don't want to mess up. The scene shifts to a pub, revealing the supplier of the new drug to be none other than Gang J. Despite his prior dismissal from the organization, Gang J has resurfaced in this illicit business. In the midst of everything, Jaiwu delves into the database and uncovers her father's case file. The records reveal that during Mr. Dong Hun's murder, Officer Jiho was engaged in a different operation. Once again, Jaiwu faces a frustrating dead end in her quest for revenge for her father. Meanwhile, Mu Jin decides to pay a visit to his drug-making facility. The narcotics department catches wind of this intel. Prior to the mission briefing, the phones of all the team members are taken away. In the briefing, Jaiwu learns that the target for today's operation is none other than Mr. Mu Jin. The police have been monitoring him through hidden cameras installed in his hotel. However, Jaiwu faces a dilemma as she has no means of communicating with Mu Jin. 
She is forced to proceed with the mission. The police silently infiltrate the factory and make their way to the meth production area. Shaiwu is powerless as she knows that Pildo's camera can record her every move. When Pildo heads downstairs to arrest Mujin, a sudden shot rings out, creating chaos. Seizing the opportunity, Mujin escapes. A chemical fire erupts in the factory, further aiding his getaway. Shaiwa rushes downstairs to assist Mujin. She is holding her pistol at Pildo from behind. A massive explosion occurs, allowing Mujin and his associate to flee by jumping into the water. Shiho was left puzzled about the source of the gunshot. During the investigation, Shaiwu assists in finding a gun presumed to be the one used in the shooting. The gun bears a scratch similar to the one recovered from Dong Hun's murder. It's revealed that Jaiwu used the pistol to distract Pildo and enable Mujin's escape. Still uncertain about the gunshot, Jiho checks his team members' weapons to ensure none of them fired the shot. To his dismay, he finds no evidence among them. Angry over the raid, Mujin instructs his right-hand man, Teju, to track down the culprit responsible for leaking their information. Shaiwu takes the initiative and calls Mujin to ensure he's safe. During the conversation, she confesses to firing the pistol and intentionally leaving the gun behind. Her motive is to unveil the truth surrounding the pistol's owner, who she thinks is her captain Jiho. Shaiwu also reveals the existence of hidden cameras in Mujin's hotel that tipped off the police about their plans at the factory. Following Mujin's orders, all the cameras are located and disabled. This action leaves Jiho and his team at a frustrating dead end in their investigation. On the other hand, Gang Jae makes a vengeful return to Mujin's gym. He is driven by a singular purpose, to demonstrate his newfound power and settle the score. What unfolds is a brutal bloodbath, with Gang Jae inflicting pain on the gym members just as he experienced. Taeju, in particular, becomes a target. Gang Jae breaks his arm as an act of revenge. The police are alerted to the crime scene, prompting Jaiwu to visit the gym. The sight of the aftermath leaves her visibly shaken. Anxious, she turns to Pildo, questioning whether Mujin was among the casualties. She breathes a sigh of relief upon learning that Mujin wasn't present at the gym during the attack. Meanwhile, Mujin reviews the CCTV footage of the gym and discovers Gangji's role in the attack. Four of the organization members died. During the funerals, Jaiwu attends to catch a brief glimpse of Mujin. It was to ensure he was unharmed. On her way back, she unexpectedly encounters Pildo, but her helmet conceals her identity. Mr. Jiho visits Mujin and emphasizes that he won't give up until he is behind bars. Despite the warning, Mujin remains confident that Jiho can never catch him. As they review evidence at the office, Pildo gets word from a colleague about CCTV footage revealing Gangji's involvement in the gym incident. Shaiwu was taken aback to realize that the person who had previously tried to take her life has returned with even more power. Meanwhile, the team uncovers Gangji's prior ties to Mujin and his gym through old connections. Pildo assumes Mujin will lay low after the incident, but Mr. Jiho, knowing Mujin well, is certain that he won't stop until he exacts his revenge. It's clear Jiho has a deep understanding of Mujin's mindset. As anticipated, Mujin instructs Teju to track down Gang J. He is unable to bear witnessing his organization crumbling due to this situation. Jiho devises a strategic plan. They decide to release Mango to observe Mujin's reaction and actions. The idea is to catch Mujin when he's immersed in seeking his own revenge. Jiho expresses concerns about potential casualties, but Jiho remains unfazed. Shaiwu takes it upon herself to inform Mujin about Jiho's scheme, prompting Mujin to craft a counterplan. It appears he's willing to play along with Jiho's game. He intends to turn the tables and destroy Jiho's plan from within. Mango was released, and a team of undercover cops is strategically placed in his pub for surveillance. Jiho briefs his team on the next steps. He reveals that he has found someone within the organization who may be willing to cooperate with them. As he sets out to meet this informant, Jaiwu decides to follow him. However, Pildo unexpectedly appears before Jaiwu, revealing that it was a trap to expose Mujin's spy. A confrontation ensues. Jaiwu manages to overpower Pildo and make her escape. On her way out, she spots Teju in his car. Mr. Jiho and Pildo now suspect the presence of a spy within their team. Jiho is convinced that Jaiwu might be the culprit, as the leaks seem to coincide with her joining the team. He orders Pildo to closely monitor her every move. As Gang Jae watches the CCTV footage from Mango's casino, he discovers Jaiwu's new identity. Following Jiho's orders, 
Pildo follows Jaiwu while she visits the forensic service to obtain the pistol's report. While Jaiwu continues her investigation on Gang J, Pildo confronts her. He questions her why she's operating so low. Jaiwu manages to alleviate his suspicions. They decide to follow Mango, hoping he'll lead them to Gang J. Their pursuit takes them to an old car factory where Mango meets Gang J. However, it turns out to be a trap. Gang J anticipated Jaiwu's pursuit through Mango. He signals his goons, and they attack Pildo and Jaiwu. Despite a fearless fight, they eventually get captured. Gang J is delighted to finally exact his revenge. He plans to torment Jaiwu as much as he endured under Mujin's hand. The fights escalates as Gangji's men attack Mujin. However, his exceptional fighting skills allow him to face and subdue each adversary. Gang Jae contacts Mu Jin through one of the men's phones and reveals Jai Wu's abduction. Mu Jin springs into action. Meanwhile, Gang Jae traps Jai Wu and Pildo in a van and places them beneath a crushing machine. Their hands are cuffed, and there are no means of escape. As the van begins to get crushed, Mu Jin arrives just in time. He rams his car into the machine to disable it. Jai Wu manages to escape but Pildo remains trapped inside, still handcuffed. With the police approaching, Mu Jin is forced to flee the scene. Meanwhile, Jaiwu struggles to free Pildo. As she attempts to release him, the machine starts up again, slowly crushing the car. In a desperate move, Jaiwu manages to pull the machine's wire and finally stops it. Pildo is saved, but Jaiwu collapses due to excessive blood loss. Devastated by Jaiwu's injury, Pildo's focus shifts from pursuing Mu Jin to capturing Gang Jae. Amid the chaos, Mu Jin decides it's best to send Jaiwu out of the country as quickly as possible. Concerned about her safety and the risk of exposure, he believes that her leaving is the safest option, especially with Gang Jae on the loose. Mu Jin communicates this decision to Jaiwu, but she adamantly refuses. Despite being aware of the dangers to her life, Jaiwu was determined to stay and pursue justice by capturing her father's murderer. The situation escalates as Mu Jin eliminates a cop who was aware of Jaiwu's true identity. Meanwhile, Gang Jae reaches out to Jiho and offers assistance in capturing Mu Jin. Mu Jin receives information on Gang Ji's whereabouts. With his men, he moves to confront him. Unbeknownst to them, the police lie in wait, planning to catch them in the act. A fierce battle erupts between the two gangs resulting in Mu Jin finally overpowering Gang Jae. Despite Gang Ji's attempts to flee, Mu Jin relentlessly pursues him. In the meantime, the police successfully arrest the remaining gang members. Jai Wu arrives at the scene and witnesses Mu Jin chasing Gang Jae. A brutal confrontation ensues between the two. Mu Jin manages to wound Gang Jae, momentarily gaining the upper hand. However, Gang Jae seizes an opportunity and strikes back. He viciously stabs Mu Jin multiple times. Before Gang Jae can deliver the fatal blow, Jaiwu intervenes. She fires her weapon, allowing Mu Jin to escape. Despite Captain Jiho cornering him at gunpoint, Mu Jin manages to flee, aided by Taeju. Meanwhile, Gang Jae threatens to expose her identity. Pildo arrives, but before Gang Jae can reveal the truth, Jaiwu shoots him and silences him forever. The situation takes a drastic turn as Mu Jin's life hangs in the balance due to severe blood loss. Unable to seek help from a hospital, he turns to an associate and a retired doctor residing in a temple. Meanwhile, Jaiwu was taken aback when she receives a letter from the late Gang Jae. Inside, she finds a picture of her father alongside Gihu, who's donning a police uniform. Upon receiving a call from Mu Jin, Jaiwu visits him at the temple and questions him about the photograph. It's during this conversation that Mu Jin discloses a startling revelation. Mr. Dong Hun was actually a cop sent by Gihu to infiltrate their organization. However, Dong Hun betrayed Gihu and sided with them, leading to his eventual demise by Gihu. Mu Jin admits to lying to Jaiwu in order to strengthen her resolve. He hoped it would fuel her determination to seek retribution for her father's murder. Meanwhile, Gihu returns intoxicated from a night out with Pildo. As he sits down, he is viciously attacked and stabbed multiple times by an unknown assailant. Jaiwu arrives at the location and is alarmed to find blood on the doorknob. Upon entering, Gihu, in a state of panic, mistakes Jaiwu for his attacker and fires a shot at her. Pildo, hearing the gunshot, rushes to the scene. Instead of giving aid, Jaiwu confronts Gihu and presses a dagger against his throat. She demands answers about her father's fate five years ago. At this moment, Gihu realizes Jaiwu's true identity as his best friend's daughter. 
he reveals that Mr. Don Hun was an undercover cop embedded in Mujin's organization. Before he can disclose the complete truth, Pildo's arrival forces Gihu to hand Jiwu evidence of her father's loyalty to the police until his tragic end. As Jiwu escapes just before Pildo arrives, he catches a glimpse of her backpack. Upon inspecting it, Jiwu discovers letters penned by Mr. Don Hun until the day of his demise. The letters unveil Dong Hun's unwavering loyalty to the police. It is revealed that Dong Hun had gifted Mu Jin a lighter with a hidden tracker. It leads Mu Jin to discover Dong Hun's betrayal. It is because of this he subsequently murders him with his own firearm. Shattered by the revelation that she unknowingly aided her father's killer, Jai Wu has a mental breakdown. She pulls over her car, venting her frustration and anger by striking herself. After composing herself, she removes the organization's tattoo from her chest, ready to take revenge. The situation grows dire as Gihu remains hospitalized. Meanwhile, Mu Jin receives word from his lawyer that Jai Wu was spotted near Gihu's residence, hinting that she might have uncovered the truth. Jai Wu, having tended to her wounds, prepares to depart. She takes her father's ashes and the dagger Mu Jin gave her to avenge her father's killer. As she steps out, she's ambushed by assailants who forcibly drag her back into the house. They attempt to drown her in the bathtub. However, Jai Wu fiercely fights back, unleashing an intense struggle. At the same time, Teju enters Jai Wu's house with the intent of eliminating her. He reveals the truth about Mujin's act of murdering her father due to betrayal. A fierce battle erupts between them, marked by attacks and evasions. Despite the odds, Jai Wu manages to overpower Teju. He ultimately ends his life in the midst of the intense confrontation. The situation takes a complex turn as Mu Jin willingly surrenders himself to the police to prove his innocence in Gangji's murder. In the interrogation room, Jai Wu confronts Mu Jin, insisting he must face consequences for his actions. The police possess Mu Jin's dagger and his fingerprints as evidence linking him to Gangji's murder. Jai Wu believes that justice will finally catch up with him. However, Jai Wu discreetly removes the evidence from the evidence room and informs Mu Jin about the altered situation. Simultaneously, Pildo discovers CCTV footage showing Jai Wu near Gihu's residence. It leads everyone to suspect she's the one who attacked him. Despite their efforts to detain her, Jai Wu manages to evade capture. With the evidence against Mu Jin removed, the police find themselves powerless, believing Jai Wu is still on their side. Mu Jin returns to the gym only to discover Teju's lifeless body. It dawns on him that Jai Wu had manipulated the evidence to confront and eliminate him herself. Meanwhile, Pildo learns from Captain Gihu how Mu Jin manipulated Jai Wu within the organization. Jai Wu was eventually caught and taken to the hospital. Despite her attempts to escape, Pildo intercepts her. He emphasizes the dangers of pursuing Mu Jin alone. Jai Wu, fully aware of the risks, remains determined to take matters into her own hands. With no other choice, Pildo handcuffs himself to Jai Wu. Suddenly, they are ambushed by Mujin's men. Despite the difficult situation, they manage to escape. During their time together, Pildo tends to Jai Wu's wounds, fostering a connection that makes Jai Wu realize she's not entirely alone. As the night unfolds, Pildo persuades Jai Wu to consider arresting Mujin, aligning with her father's wishes. The budding connection between them is abruptly shattered the following day when Mujin, furious at Jai Wu's resistance, kills Pildo in her presence. Devastated, Jai Wu seizes Pildo's gun and flees, consumed by a thirst for vengeance. She arrives at Mujin's hotel, sparking a brutal confrontation with his men. Armed with Pildo's gun, Jai Wu relentlessly takes down each assailant. The showdown culminates in a face-to-face -face encounter with Mu Jin. In a defiant moment, Jai Wu claims she was initially willing to surrender but now chooses to embrace a monstrous path for revenge. A final intense battle unfolds, leaving Jai Wu critically injured. In a decisive moment, she seizes Mu Jin's dagger and stabs him, momentarily subduing him. As Mu Jin picks up a pistol in a final desperate move, it's revealed the magazine is empty. Seizing the opportunity, Jai Wu delivers a fatal blow, stabbing Mu Jin in the chest and bringing an end to the long-standing conflict. Remember to subscribe to my channel, and we will see you next time.